Hi everyone, a little bit of a different video today, um, outside this time, because my YouTube studio is being updated at the moment, so I thought I'd do a bit of an outside broadcast and discuss whether owning a vineyard is going to be a good investment. I'll go through all the facts and figures, whether it make a decent return or not, and it might be something that you want to consider in the future as well. I'm Anthony, and as always, we're talking money. Okay, investing isn't always about stocks and shares. You can put your money to good use in lots of alternative investments. And this is one alternative investment, that's for sure. So what made me think about starting a vineyard? This is my vineyard, by the way, in a little corner of Herefordshire, uh, where I live. And uh, I thought, well, you know, got a spare bit of land. Uh, we didn't know what to do with it, so we thought we'd start a vineyard. Now, does it make economic sense to do this kind of thing, or is it just uh, a folly? Well, maybe <laughs> time will tell, that's for sure. But let's just go through the figures for a second. Right, okay, there are three elements to uh, a vineyard and the costs associated with it. The first and the most expensive thing is the land itself. Now, we were fortunate enough to have a little bit of land, a bit of spare land, really, that we didn't really know what to do with. But if you were to buy land, in the UK at the moment, it's working out round about eight to ten thousand pounds per acre. Now you can get a lot of vines on an acre. Uh, I think I think you can get around about a thousand vines per acre which is about three thousand or up to three thousand bottles of wine. So it's not an inconsequential amount but an acre uh, of farmland or agricultural land is about eight thousand to ten thousand pounds depending on where you are in the country of course. Ideally you want well draining soil and uh, if it can face south or southeast, southwest, something like that, then that's even better. So that's the first and most expensive thing. The next thing is the infrastructure that you've really got to put in place uh, for a vineyard. And thirdly, it's the vines themselves. So if we just break down the infrastructure um, for a second and just go through all the costs associated with that, I think that might be quite helpful to some people who are just sort of thinking about it anyway. So um, what have we got then? Let's just take this row for an example. This row, we've got uh, 11 rows here over the vineyard, but each row is exactly the same. So we've got um, some six foot stakes, we've got some wire, we've got these little gripples which are tensioners for the, uh, the cable. Uh, buried under here somewhere, we've got the ground anchors. There you go, there's one ground anchor buried into the ground. We've got some um, sort of eyelets or whatever, and all these sort of little bits and pieces. I'll put it in the description exactly where I've got all these things from, and also I'll get some prices in the description as well, so you can see exactly how much I spent on um, you know, each row, and then you can pro rata it up or down or whatever, and uh, you know, work out your own costs accordingly. So we've got an end post, some wire, a ground anchor, and then we come on to the trellising itself. Now I'm using um, a a trellising system which will have a vertical leaf wall to hold all my um, sort of vine growth as it were and that entails a main trellis line and two sets of catch wires above which are held onto the end post by two chains, two sets of chains, two pairs of chains and you have pairs of chains so that you can take the wire off the post and gather up all the foliage and hook it back on. We also have a wire tensioner uh, which is very, very useful. You just put a tool on there and just twist it and twist it and twist it until the line is the tension that you require. So that's the uh, wire. Now, in terms of how much wire you need, I bought actually about two kilometers, 2,000 meters of wire, which sounds a horrendous amount, but when you sort of think that it's got to go, you know, you've got uh, two whole lengths of the uh, row there and another one there and another one there, and each row probably is about, 45 meters between the end posts. Um, so that's 90 meters, 180, that's 200 and, 200 and, I don't know, 25, 200, 200 plus meters of cabling or um, wire per row. So you can, again, just tot it up depending on how large you want to make your vineyard. So it's quite a lot of wire, unfortunately. And then we come onto the vines. Now that's the exciting bit. Um, I bought these vines from a company in the UK who imports them from Germany and you'll find um, probably a few other suppliers that do a sort of similar sort of thing. And, uh, but I use this uh, particular company, a really, really helpful um, chap there, but I will put a website on the screen so you can see and I will put a, the description 
the link in the description, and also the associated costs as well. Now, when I bought these vines, I think they, from again, from memory, and I'm, I'll put the correct price in the description just in case I'm wrong, so I will look it up. I think I paid round about um, two pounds per vine, and uh, I think the very, very first video of this series actually shows me unboxing them, and uh, you can see how big and what you actually get for your money, as it were. And uh, that is the other cost, the final cost really, as far as setting up the vineyard's concerned. So all in all, I think I've spent probably about three and a half thousand pounds uh, to get to this stage. And we're, uh, yeah, as I say, we're well into um, our first year now. Oh, well, sorry, just starting our second year now. And um, we're hoping, hoping that this second year will really sort of establish our vineyard and um, go from there. Now going forwards, there are some more costs that, uh, to consider. Um, we haven't yet, but we will probably have to um, spray our vines at some stage. Uh, we're not going to be um, organic as such. We're going to use um, pesticides and things like that just to, especially in this country, funnily enough, is that um, vines and things like this will get attacked by aphids and um, you know all sorts of creepy crawlers as it were which we really don't want and also um, some diseases of the leaf as well which we want to keep under control so we're going to be um, spraying and we'll probably be doing that either maybe this year but certainly from year three onwards we'll start spraying the the vine so that's going to be an additional expense expense which I don't yet know but um, as soon as I do that will be probably subject to another video and we'll go from there but is there actually any money to be made in a vineyard? Well, there's actually two things to consider. First of all, it's the uh, the actual value of any wine or grapes that you sell from the vineyard. But the most important thing is the uplift in value of the land that you've purchased. So do you remember that I said that an acre of land is about £8,000 for an acre? Well, sticking a viable vineyard on it, you're going to multiply that £8,000 many, many times, in my opinion anyway, um, if you ever wanted to sell it. So actually, I think it does make economic sense just purely from the uplift in land value. But of course, owning a vineyard is quite a cool thing to have. I'm making uh, white wine, white grapes, um, because it is an easier, I, in my opinion, it's an easier product to make. Red wine, loads of people make that obviously, but it's a little bit more of a, um, you know, a learning curve for red wine compared to white wine grapes. So. Anyway, that's what I'm doing, and uh, yeah, it might be something that you want to consider. So it's not complicated rocket science, and anybody can do it. In fact, I have um, put on a separate channel, which I'll put again a link in the description, exactly how I've gone about making this vineyard, and you can see how I've gone about it and uh, all the mistakes I've made, so you don't have to do it. Anyway, it is a very um, exciting thing that you can do with a scrap bit of land if you are lucky enough to have land. If you don't have land, then why not do it in the garden? And if you don't have a garden, well, you know, maybe yeah, you, you can ask somebody who has got a bit of land whether you can buy a little bit or um, use a, you know, rent it as it were. So anyways, lots of alternatives there to consider and uh, I'll keep you posted as to whether we make any money out of this. But I think just the very fact that we've got vines on a scrap bit of land has actually increased the value quite substantially. I can't tell you exactly because it's not for sale as it were, but uh, certainly vineyards or houses with vineyards on seem to go for a, a pretty good premium uh, compared to a comparable house with land with no vineyard on. So anyway, have a think about it. And uh, as an alternative investment, it may be one that you want to consider doing. Certainly having a vineyard is not a form of passive income, but nor is it a business or a job either. It's more of a pastime that hopefully will become a profitable investment for me. And if you decide to do it, then check out my other channel at My Country Life, where I've detailed step by step exactly how I've gone about setting up this vineyard. Hopefully it's of interest if you want to go down that route, but see how you get on anyway. Very different video, as I say, this time. We'll be back in the studio next time. But until the next video, I'm Anthony, and as always, we're talking money.